Well, hi, everyone. Welcome back to Planet Photoshop. Corey Barker here. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and uh, getting ready for the Christmas holiday coming up. But today I've got something pretty interesting. I discovered something uh, playing around with uh, 3D and Photoshop, not surprisingly. And something rather interesting using reflections um, in the program. And it's really quite simple to set this up. And it's a lot of fun once it is set up because I literally poured through like almost a couple of dozen photos trying uh, this effect on it. And that's how much fun it is when you discover something like this. You can try on a whole bunch of different photos and get something interesting every time. So let's begin by first uh, I have a document already created here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and open up an image we're gonna work with, which is this photo right here. We're gonna start with this one. We're gonna do some other ones, but uh, just so you can see some variations, but um, I'm gonna start with this photo here. So I'm just going to take this and drag and drop it into this um, other document. I'm just gonna hold the shift key down, drag it over and it drops it in the center, and there we go. So we'll get back to this photo in just a moment, but over here in the layers panel, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blank layer and then up in the 3D menu here, go to New Shape from Layer, and we're gonna choose Cylinder. And it's going to drop a new cylinder on that layer. It is in 3D, so if I go and grab my 3D object rotate tool, there is uh, my 3D object. Now what I really want here is just the cylinder material. I don't want the top or the bottom of this graphic or this 3D object to be visible. So it's gonna go into the 3D uh, panel, go under Window to 3D. And we'll just drag that out. Go over to the mesh section, which is the second tab in the top here. And you'll notice we have three mesh um, items here, the top, bottom, and cylinder. So we're just gonna turn off the top and bottom. So now you can see, I can see right through the cylinder, just like that. All right, so we go back up here in the, in the uh, options bar and just click on the home button. It brings the uh, shape back to its original position. Top and bottom are still off. And now let's go back to that photo uh, that we had uh, just dragged in a moment ago. I'm gonna reselect that layer and then go under the 3D menu again and this time choose new 3D postcard from layer. So we're not doing really anything to the photo but rather just putting it in 3D space. So if I use the 3D tool again, you can see there it is rotating around in 3D. Okay, so now I have two 3D layers, one containing the cylinder object and one containing the photo. So we're gonna go ahead and select both of those layers, just hold the shift key down, select both layers, and we're gonna go under the 3D menu and choose Merge 3D Layers. It's gonna merge these into a single 3D layer, yet they are still two separate 3D objects. Now, if I go and use the same object tool I was using a moment ago in the toolbar and I rotate the, um, the object around, you can see it's rotating everything. There's the picture and the cylinder, and it's rotating all at once. But I don't want to have to do that. I actually want to be able to rotate the cylinder on its own and leave the photo where it's at. To do that, we're going to need to use the mesh tools, which are located here in the 3D panel. Third set of tools down. I'm just going to go in here and choose the 3D mesh rotate tool. And you'll notice it's content sensitive as I position my cursor over it. And then I'm just going to click and drag and rotate the object. And you can see we're looking through the cylinder at our subject right there. And if I were to rotate the overall object, you can see it's just kind of cutting through that object and that's absolutely what I want it to do for, um, for this particular effect. Now, I also want it to be longer. The cylinder isn't that long. If you see me, if I move the graphic, you can see the, the cylinder is not that deep. So to extend it, I'm just gonna use this setting here. We highlight on that object. You can go and get the mesh scale tool inside the uh, 3D panel. It's gonna get a 3D mesh scale tool. Make sure we've got the right mesh selected, which is the cylinder here in the mesh section. Go ahead and move on that. I'm just gonna click and drag and I'm just gonna hold the um, option key. And that, if you click and drag up, it basically extends. See how I'm just clicking? If I click and drag down, again, hold down the option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, and click and drag down, it gets smaller. And if I drag up, it gets longer. So we're getting a nice long cylinder there. So now I'm gonna go rotate that object back around so we're inside of the shape now. Now I wanna alter the cylinder a little bit. I don't want it to be a perfect circle. So I'm gonna actually want it to be more of an oval. So again, I'm gonna use that 3D mesh scale tool and then just hold down the command key this time. 
I'm sorry, the shift key. Hold down the shift key and drag up, and you can see it's extending it vertically, giving me more of, a, of an oval shape rather than a um, circular shape. So again, that's the shift key, and uh, click and drag up to make it uh, wider, and then drag down to squash it like that, so you can see what's going on there. So let's just put it down right about here. And I'm also gonna rotate that cylinder. Now we can't see the cylinder, all we see is black and that's because there's no lights in the scene right here. If I were to uh, just push it back in space here, let's just kind of 3D back here. You don't necessarily have to do what I'm doing here, I'm just showing you uh, what's going on here. So we've got a cylinder that's cutting through the photos, you can see right there. And we're looking at it through the cylinder shape. And like I said, I want to rotate the cylinder a little bit. So I'm just going to go in again in those same 3D mesh tools and use the 3D mesh roll tool. And again, position my cursor over the object and just rotate it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use that camera tool and just bring it back closer in 3D space there. There we go. So now, I've got it in position. I've got the cylinder, it's elongated, and it's got the photo kind of cutting through it and everything like that. We're looking inside the cylinder at the photo. Now, here's the cool part. I'm gonna go over into the material section of the 3D panel, third tab over here at the top, and highlight the cylinder material you see right here, which is the area around the photo here. And all we're gonna do is go down here to the reflection setting and just, I'm just gonna use the scrubby slider and just boost this up all the way to 100%. Now, all I need to do is I'm gonna go into the scene section, first tab, and go and do a ray, trast, uh, ray traced draft render, and uh, watch what happens. We get a really cool reflection on that cylinder tube, and ultimately results in a kind of interesting design look. Look, it actually created some space. I could put some text over here and do all kinds of weird things with this. But this is merely using the reflection property of that 3D object. Now, if I were to go in here and use those same mesh tools and maybe rotate the photo a little bit, notice I'm just rotating the photo, not the cylinder itself. And it can reveal a little bit more of the image. It'll do another render, and I get a completely con different configuration altogether. So I can move around the object, or the photo rather, or the cylinder itself, and ultimately get a different effect. If I go in here and rotate the cylinder around, as you can see right there, it'll go ahead and do a re-render and give me something interesting every single time. And not just with this photo. Notice I'm just rotating around getting something different, but you can also try different photos. And this is another great thing about 3D, is that, yeah, yes, I've got to this point and it looks good, and, but let's say I wanted to try it with a different photo. I don't have to go all the way back to the beginning, all I got to do is get a photo I want to use. In fact, I wanted to show you this one. This is really cool because it works pretty well with photos, as you see. And this is going back to what I said a minute ago, a moment ago about trying this on like a couple dozen photos. This is where the fun part gets is you just try it on different things and you're going to get some interesting stuff. So if I took this uh, generic image of this fire, which is just a, you know, a pretty boring image of fire. If I take that and let's go into our document and go into the texture file in the layers here, which is layer one, open it up, there's the image. I'm gonna take that fire image and replace it in that texture file. Close the document, save the changes. There's the fire now inside of that shape. Now, if we go and do another render, look at the interesting result we're gonna get. It's kind of wrapping the fire around, giving me something that could be a really cool background effect or just something that I could use as a special effect in an image, but just from a single fire using reflections, you can get some interesting distortions and image effects. So again, if I just go over here and rotate the, uh, the fire image itself a little bit, I get a different configuration altogether, giving me something very, very interesting. Simple 3D objects with reflections. Now, of course, I just tried it with a cylinder in this, uh, in this example, but you could certainly go in here and try it with a number of different shapes that they have available in Photoshop. Go in here and choose, you've got cones and uh, cubes and soda cans if you really want to play with around with that. But just uh, try different shapes and even try just the cylinder like you're doing, but try it with different images and you'll get some really interesting things going on just by playing around with that. Now, just to show you in a couple of more examples, uh, here's an image I took. I thought, 
that would look pretty cool. And then ultimately it came out looking like this. So you can see, kind of wrapped around, created kind of a really weird, I could see this being a really uh, mysterious movie poster of some kind. That could be uh, worked into an interesting concept. Here's another example. I've got an, uh, this party scene. Pretty normal party scene photo. It doesn't look all that extravagant. But now if I go ahead and run this effect on it, I get something that's a little bit more appealing and interesting. It's got me looking at it, um, seeing what's going on in here. And that's merely playing around with those reflections on 3D objects here in Photoshop CS5 Extended. That is some pretty freaky stuff.